hello guys so welcome to python programming tutorial so um in this particular video we are going to be looking at what's a python reserve word so if you have been to python if you started the python course you've probably heard about python reserve words python reserve words now your reserve words are not only unique to python they are unique um, a lot other many all languages have a group of reserve words or a set of reserve words so these reserve words are words that are used by the programming language itself because um, when you're using the programming language they all come with certain words like if else um, for while and all these words now you know um, the process of um, compiling a programming language where your code is being converted to executable code it passes through a series of steps you know complicated steps where mnemonics are actually formed, <laughs> mnemonics, <laughs> where um, your code is broken down into um, several parts, components, and a lot is done before your code is being executed. So Python looks for your interpreter or your compiler looks for um, um, several words. In Python, let's just say the interpreter, it looks for several unique words in your code you know to form um some um, middle um or some intermediate code which is being executed by the interpreter so these are the words we call reserve words um reserve words are words you can't use as um variable names like in the last um uh, video we looked at identifiers and i explained to you the different identifiers in python so the next, this video is talking about reserve words which can't be used as identifiers because they are special they are unique to python python owns them so we can't use them okay so um i'll go to a basic definition which states these words are part of the python language and can be used as identifier names they are all case sensitive and are all written in low lower case the uppercase equivalent can be used as a variable name which means this as you can see we already have a list here um these are this is an example of those words i'm telling you about as you can see most of them are lowercase but they are uppercase equivalent like i explained in the last video python is case sensitive which means lowercase variables or identifiers are different from uppercase identifiers which are different from mixed case identifiers even if it's the same word so if you haven't watched the last video you can watch it where we talked about where i talked about variables and identifiers so in this video particularly we are going to be looking at these words now i'm just going to be stating the words like i just wanted to explain to you what the words means but now I'm just going to be stating them, you know, I'm not going to be explaining what they are. In later videos, we are going to look, to go through all these words and you're going to see the exact places where most of these words are used in Python. Remember I said these words belong to Python. So if you go through a Python course, you are likely to come across 80% of these words, you know, except for a few, you know, but you're likely to come across 80% to 90% of these words or even 100% if you go through a good course, you're okay. Now we are going to look at the first one. We have true and false. These are used. These are bowling. Um, these are used for bowling expressions, or these are um, bowling variables. So like not really bowling variables. The bowling values. A bowling is a part a variable that can either be true or false. In computer terminology, we can say one or zero, or you say five voltage or negative five voltage. All right, so. This can be true or false. So those are also um, special words because you can't use them to declare variable names. So let's take the first we have false and somewhere we should see true. All right, true is not here, but true is also part. The false part then true is um, part. But in most listing of identifiers of um, keywords, you're not going to see um, false and true there. You're going to see a group of other stuff. So we have none none which is used in functions which means nothing because in python the function body must contain at least one statement but or expression but in um if you don't want if you want to just write some kind of a template where you're going to input um the um let's say some expressions later on maybe you need to input some expression later on then you can use none within the body of a function 
Yes, in that case, or a class, in that case, um, Python will understand you, but if you just have an empty body in a function, that's a function without any expression, Python is going to frown at you by generating an error. So, all right, we have true here, all right, so we have false, true, okay. So we have an, this is used for logical expressions and bitwise, um, no, particularly logical. We have as, which is used for import statements and I think import statement, import, yeah. So, um, and I think one or two other places we are going to see that we have asset which is usually used for debugging. We have async for asynchronous tax. We have await for asynchronous tax. We have the break which is used within loops to break out of a loop. We have the class statement which is used to create a class. We have the continue which is used to um, skip a particular step or to continue from the next iteration of a loop. We have the def which is used for functions. We have del which is used to delete a variable from a list or an object. Um, a dictionary or Python iterables. We are going to look at all this. I'm just explaining. We have the is if else, which is the um using conditional expressions or branching expression or branching branching constructs. We have else, which is also part of the elif. We have except, which is used to raise exceptions or to cache exceptions. That's errors in your program. And we also have finally, which is part of um, um the um, try except. You know. Finally, it's just like a final code that should be executed, piece of code or block of code that should be executed if there's any pro problem. We are going to look at all that. We have the for, which is used for loops. We have from, which is used in the import statement when you're dealing with external um, libraries or modules written by others. We have global, which is used to indicate the variables global, maybe you're within a function. We have the if, which is part of the branching construct. We have import, which is used in the, for importing um, modules or libraries written by other people or packages. We have in, which is used for for in in the loop. We have is to compare two variables if they are um, of the same object. We have lambda for lambda functions or for um, anonymous functions. We have non-local, which is also used for variables. We have um, not. Um, not which is used for logical operations. We have or which is used for logical expressions. We have pass. I told you pass, which is um, oh sorry, I mentioned none. Sorry, um, pass is what is used in the body of a um, function. Pass is used in the body of a function if you want the body of a function to be empty. None is like null. Sorry, none is like null in other programming languages. So if you have a programming language and you um. You want to assign a variable to nothing, maybe you need to, or an empty object, you use none. In most other programming languages, we have none or null. In JavaScript, we have something like undefined, but we also have null. So it's like an empty variable, it contains nothing. So we have raise, this is to raise an expression implicitly. If you want your code to throw an error, you use raise. We have return, which is used in functions to return a value. We have try, which is used in the try cache block or try accept block, not try cache, sorry, Python is try accept to um, cache an um, error within your code. Then um, we have while, which is used in the while loop. We have width, which is also used for to um, in context when working with object uh, objects. We are going to see that, and we have yield, which is used in generators. We are going to see all these, but I just want to show you some. These are most of the what we call Python reserve um, words. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys an example of using normal variables. So in this case. In this case here, we have um, a normal variable. We have var1, we have um, 20, we assign 20 to a variable var1. We learned about variable in the previous video. We also have another um, variable jack, yeah, a string. We assign it to the variable or identifier name. We have another string Nigeria, my country. We assign it to the um, variable or identifier country. And we can see we can print the variables and we have normal output. All right, now, <clears throat> but if we try to use some of those um, um, reserve words, we are going to understand why Python calls them reserve words. You see, an error generated and you cannot use it. You can't use if, so if I go through most of these, you can't use if Python is going to give you an error. You can't use um, this, Python is going to give you an error. Uh, I think if, yeah. You can't use it. You can't. You can't use um, asset to, and you can't use yield. So all this Python is going to give you an error, which shows you that Python doesn't allow you to use reserve words and as identifiers. As you can even see the color, 
the ID shows them as in a, with a different color, indicating to you those are reserved words used by Python. But like I explained to you in the previous video, Python is case sensitive, which means um, it's just the lower cases of these identifiers that are these reserved words that are actually reserved. You can use a mixed case or an upper case, and that's what I did in the um, in the next um, block here. You see this and and with the lowercase a is an it's a reserved word but and with an uppercase a it's not reserved words even if we had uppercase n or uppercase d these are all not reserved words so we can they can be used now we see if can also be used with uppercase if if with lowercase if you may not really need to ever do this but it's not advisable to use reserved words no matter the mixture the case make sure except you really need to use it within your code for a particular thing um aspects where you there's no other option then you can now use a mixed case python will allow you to do that because python is case sensitive so the cases of the case of a particular character or the case the cases of um characters in identifiers matter so if yield is a reserve word with all lowercase yield, then yield with any mixed case apart from lowercase is not a reserve word. So, and like how we saw true is a reserve word, you see, I assigned um, true to this um, yield, and you can see it will become a boolean. So, now if I come and say, it, for example, true equals to 10, I think it gives me an error, but it shows that if I use true, it's true. So in that case, you see um, true with the uppercase is a reserve word, but true with the lowercase is not a reserve word. So that's just to um, show you guys that reserve words are case sensitive, which means if you really need to use a particular word as a, an identifier, then you can use a mixture, a case which is um, different from that which is reserved. So I just want you guys to see that. Now, lastly, I'm going to show you guys how I displayed some of these variables just to so show you a code to actually execute, which means Python will accept them or we allow to use uh, you to use them as um, to accept um, them to be used as identifiers. All right, so let's do this. All right, so we see 30, we have the string done, we have almost the string almost, we have the um, complex number 2 plus 3j and we have the bowling true all of them were valid and python the code executed successfully like i said i'm using um jupyter notebook on visual studio code so in that case the visual studio code allows you to use jupyter notebook without um, installing like anaconda or something like that so if you're interested you can go online and get visual studio code and you can be able to run this code just like the way after installing python and a few other stuff getting yourself ready be able to do this so like i said i'm just trying to make this video short so that anyone can be able to follow through even if you're just starting up your journey in python all right and that's it for today and i'll be seeing you in the next video have a nice time